Good morning, welcome to Artisan Electrics. Um, thank you so much for coming to watch today. Hopefully you can learn something from the channel. We are here back at the job where I don't know if you remember, but Jordan did the AFDDs in the garden and I was in the house with the nightmare side of it. And I never actually finished because it was just getting late, but there was tons and tons of faults. Every single circuit had a fault on it. So my plan is today just to work my way through all of the circuits, find all the faults, fix all the faults, change whatever I have to, and get the power on and done today so that I can get it dressed back and looking nice as well. Um, the customer is absolutely a, a total legend. What was this again? Avocado, lemon and poppy seed. <laughs> that is the most artisanal cake I've ever seen in my life. I feel like that deserves an arty shot. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's not just food, it's artisan food and some lovely coffee. So we, I gotta say our customers are pretty awesome. Works over here. It's never gonna be your finest work, but as long as our work is up and beyond, we just can't worry too much about the rest of things, as long as it's compliant and safe. So my plan is get all of this dressed in, get it all lidded up, trunked up, looking good. Run one more circuit along here. They've got like a towel rail on the other side and a socket for this to plug onto. The other thing is the lighting in here. I don't think it's ever really worked properly and I'm just having a look at it and it's not hard to see why. What I don't get is they've got a neutral there, which I'm pretty sure runs back to the board because I tested it. But then you've also got a singles neutral. So straight away, that says to me, if someone's done that, it's someone who doesn't really know what they're doing because why would you have a perfectly good neutral, which goes all the way back to the board, have it fold up and coiled up back in the board and then run a single, in, a single core neutral there as well. It doesn't seem to make sense. Maybe it will later and I'll eat my words, we'll see. But my plan is just to not eat my words, eat the cake, and then get all of this going and fixed. Oh, cake. Oh my gosh, that's amazing, Nathan. That is some seriously good cake. Like you can actually taste the avocado. It's like the avocado makes it really creamy. I think we should just do a food channel and sack off electrics. I've done loads of electrics now. I, don't, I feel like I'm ready for a change. If, if Heston Blumenthal or Jamie Oliver or someone's watching, I'm more than happy to come and host MasterChef for you. I, I figured all it is, there's no actual skill required. All it is, is how you, come over here and I'll demonstrate. It's how you hold the spoon. Okay, so you hold it with a loose fulcrum grip like that have to be able to get full maneuverability. You just peel a tiny bit off because you don't want to be greedy. Pinky slightly out, little scoop. You wait, you will not be laughing when I'm on MasterChef alongside the guy from the Mighty Boosh, Noel Fielding. He's like, my idol, Noel Fielding, if you're watching this, just hire me. I can eat it as slow as you like on telly. That is an incredible cake, big fan. I knew the lighting in here was a bit of a mess just from when I started taking it apart. I don't think I really anticipated how much of a mess it was. But yeah, that's the strangest thing. So I presume there's like junction boxes above the ceiling or something. <laughs> yeah, surely, surely you'd have something at the, um, at the light switch would be live, wouldn't it? You'd have at least the common or a connector block or something in there. But all of the light switches are dead. But when I power the lights up, the, walls, the wall lights come up. So that seems pretty bizarre to me. That doesn't make any sense, how the lights come on, even though the switches are dead. It's one of them where you start to like doubt yourself. You're like, that is, yeah, really strange. Like some of the stuff going on, really strange. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just try and figure this out and I'll, uh, cause that, that's all dead as well. Unless they did, ah. Uh, 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 unless it's a backwards way of doing it. Maybe they ran the switch lines back to the board and those back to the board, that's it. That would make sense. I reckon that's what they've done. I reckon they've, they've run all the switch lines back to the consumer unit and they've run all the, the feeds to the lights back to the consumer unit and they've done all the switch wiring in the consumer unit. It's a pretty ridiculous way of doing it. I reckon that's how it's been done. So. I'm gonna test that theory now and we'll get back to you. So I'm trying to suss out what on earth is going on. You've got, you've got all the ball lights coming on, but none of the switches are live. So what I'm doing is I'm just living up one thing at a time and I'm going and seeing what, what comes on and comes live. One of the luxuries of having an empty house is you can do that because no one's, no one's here to get a shock. I think what I'll probably liven up next is one of these, just because 
these single cables. I want to see what happens if they liven up. So we'll just send a teensy bit, just a teensy bit of voltage down there and see if that switch is now live or any of these for that matter. Yeah, there we go. So that is, that is a rather strange way of doing things. I'm tempted just to disconnect all the switches and just wire them up fresh so that I know exactly how it's happening. Um, we'll have to do three plate wiring, probably inside the trunking. I'll try and label it up as clear as I can, but man, hats off to the next Sparky that comes in here because that would be so confusing. No wonder I was confused. What they've basically done, it's they've run every leg back to the consumer unit from all the switches back to the consumer unit and then from all the lights back to the consumer unit and they've done all the wiring in there. So I just had this big, nest of wires in there, like some kind of robin nest, and they've they've figured it all out from there, which I guess in a way is ahead of the time, because you could do smart lighting and things, because you could switch off whatever you wanted from whatever you wanted, wherever you wanted. Um, like, you want to switch off the light in your toilet from your bedroom? Do it, mate. But it is a really unusual way of doing things. There's still potential that it could be more faults on it. Like, I could figure it all out, wire it all up, and then find there's a borrowed neutral or, or something. So I'm kind of, I'm just gonna try and test it as thoroughly as I can as I go. Um, and I know this probably seems like slightly ropey, livening things up like this, and that's because it is. <laughs> but you know what? Um, sometimes it's necessary. I think one of the only reasonable excuses to work live is when you're fault finding. Um, so I'm just gonna label that up as switch. Um, yeah, I think when you're fault finding, you, you have to have the power on really. If it's like a loose connection or something, of course you don't, but it saves you a heck of a lot of time when you're just trying to suss out what's going where. So now my theory would be that this probably goes out. No, because that doesn't really make sense either, but this probably feeds one of the other switches or something. The trouble is the cable's too short. So I'm gonna extend this down to a breaker, liven it up and see what happens. So I was trying to figure out why it didn't make any sense. And I thought it was just old school and I hadn't come across it before. But I'm starting to realize the reason why it didn't make sense to me is because it doesn't make sense. It's not old school, it's no school. I was thinking, how does that two way lighting work? I know you've got the singles cable and so I thought, right, I'm just gonna connect it up exactly as it is. I've not, I've not changed anything. The switches are still connected up the same. I've connected it up at the board. And I realized the reason why it didn't seem to make sense to me how you could do a strapper like that is because you can't do a strapper like that. The lights don't work and the customer basically said that that one has to be off and that one for that one to work or that one has to be on for that one to work so basically it's just incorrect the strappers aren't going to work like that so what i'm going to do is i've actually got a neutral at this switch which was coiled up in the back so i don't see the need to have the single cable neutral so i'm going to rip that out i'm going to just use the neutral that's already there Forget the free plate, I'm going to wire it up as two plate, I'm going to wire it up at the switch with a little connector block or way going the switch. And then I'm just going to run a three core from there over to that switch and do it properly. So we're going to wire it as two plate and then we're going to run in a new two way switch. So bear with. So basically I'm changing it, the switching. So rather than having the, um, this was wired up like so, um, and this was just coiled up in the back, obviously it wasn't stripped. Rather than have it like that to get the permanent feed through to there, um, what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to, sorry, it was wired up that way actually. I'm going to disconnect the um, black cable from there. I'm going to connect up the line straight through. Um, we should back off the screw a tiny bit more. Um, and I've got the feed now coming from the board. I'm just going to put into the common terminal. I'm going to put that into there. And then these two now, rather than have these as live conductors, which by the way, they weren't sleeved up anyway, um, I'm actually going to use them as neutral conductors. So I'm just gonna carry them straight on through. I might have to potentially install a deeper back box, we'll see. I need to sleeve up those earths as well. Those earths aren't sleeved. So this is the cable going down to the switch and this neutral wasn't being used and they had the single core cable going over there. So, so this is what I mean by no school. Like I don't think, I think when I first came, I was a little bit stuck because I thought, oh, it's just, you know, they've got all these single cables running everywhere. It's just a very old school way of doing it. But actually, yeah, it's not old school. It just didn't work. <laughs> what I want to see is where are these cables going to? So they're coming out of here. Along there, along there. 
So one of them goes back up and down and through. Oh, I see. So it's, yeah, so it's going all the way from there to here, actually. So actually, that neutral is going to this point first. That's cool, though. We will change that. So we've, uh, we've pulled some new switch lines in. Um, well, we've kept all the existing cable, we've just changed their uses as I explained earlier. And I've just pulled this three core in. I've rerouted the cable because I wanted to get as many of the cables off of that wall. And if you want to, maybe we'll find a clip from the old video, but basically there was a whole ton of cables going across there and it just looked terrible. So now it's going straight up and through and down into the light fitting. So we've fed the switch two plate. Then I've run a three core across to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that down into a switch and just keep it simple, just have a normal two-way switch. And then I pulled this 2.5 mil in. This 2.5 will go to do a socket there for the garage roller shutter door. And then it will come out of there down to do a towel rail. The only cable left that looks pretty trash is the shower one. But I don't think we're going to really be changing that. Like I say, we just can only do what we can do. But yeah, we're making good progress. I'm going to get the lighting circuit in here wired up and on. And then that's less cables there. And then it just leaves the bit of figuring things out, out there. Oof. Hey, it's the most bizarre way of doing things that I've possibly ever seen. So you've got the singles cables. See, why have they bothered with singles when you've got twin and a cores that aren't being used? So uh, again, these wall lights here, I found a feed which seems to power those. So we're definitely right in our theory. All of the cables are going back to the board and all the connections are made at the board. Rather, rather strange way of doing it. I feel more inclined, if I'm being honest, just to be like, do you know what? <laughs> You've got to rewire your lighting circuit. But have a look at this switch. So these are all dead. These aren't connected to anything, right? Um, fair enough, if you just had like a twin and earth from here going back to the consumer unit, and then a feed from your pendants back to the consumer unit, that's fine, you could figure that wiring out. But I mean, you've got like, the most confusing configurations I think I've, I've ever seen inside a house. Okay, so this core goes straight through, this one goes to there. I, I reckon, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to just seriously do some figuring out because like some of these go back to the board, some of these disappear off into the ceiling. So I imagine I've got junction boxes and all sorts, but either way, it's just a nightmare. Trying to actually work out what on earth the Sparky had in his head 40 years ago or however long he was actually doing this. Another room on. Another room on. Don't know what that one does. Well, don't worry about that. However, combien. We have a room that doesn't work. Um, we've got a live feed, but we've got no neutral, it seems. So I'm gonna save my Conor McGregor swagger until I actually figure out the problem. So I've just taken this pendant down to try and figure out what on earth's going on in this side of the house. This is the first time I've seen it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right, well, our... That would explain why some things don't work, for sure. Ah. What the heck? Right, okay. All right. So we've got these cables here. Oh. <laughs> right, well, that'll be why the fan doesn't work then, won't it? Because um, there's the other end of the cable. Okay. Um... <laughs> Where is, it, where is it powered from then? Was this doing something? Maybe? Oh no, this was doing the tower rail, wasn't it? So yeah, this is old. This is, I think this is cut on the other side now. But yeah, that can, that can come out um, shortly. But why hasn't this got any power? Let's see. No, it's dead. Dead as a dodo. If we work out what these cables are doing, you've got one of these will be a feed in and a feed out. And you've got this single core here, which I've not got a Scooby-Doo that one goes or why it's dead that neutral that goes that way i reckon that that is the neutral that goes across to the switch over there what a shambles what a shambles this has actually turned into quite an interesting video for you guys after all i thought it was just going to be a uh, case of finish the consumer unit and and off we pop but 
No, apparently not. So we figured out the problem. So these basically were just going the other side of the wall and they were going to that junction box. Do you remember I said, in referencing back to the other video, um, those borrowed neutrals and those cables that didn't appear to be doing anything, so I've chopped them out. Well, it turns out one of them was this. So the neutral for this circuit was borrowed off of the socket circuit um, previously. So I chopped it out and tucked it, just got rid of it. It turns out it was being used, it was being used for the lighting, but obviously it's not okay to borrow a neutral off of a socket circuit for a lighting circuit. So what I've done is I've used my super rod, the keychain. Um, I managed to get it through from the other side using this cable as a draw, um, just to trace it along. And then this cable here was the one that was going in through the wall to the fan. This fan, don't, I don't think actually works. We're back to run some ducting out and replace that, run the ducting through the garage at some point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a three core from here through for the fan and I'm going to run a new feed cable from here through back to the consumer unit so that this is all fed. And then I think I can now work out how this will go down to that switch and it will make some sort of relative sense. It's a really backwards way of doing it, but I think I've sussed it out now. Um, I just need to find a way to, to neaten it up a little bit, maybe just drill the hole a little bit wider and bring all the connections inside the actual light fitting or something, but either way we'll figure it out. Found something pretty interesting. Horrible choice of colours. You've got this red cable here going into a connector block. I thought, oh well, yeah, that's obviously the live. I went to connect onto that. I thought, well I'll just trace out where all the cables are going. I trace it back. The red cable's been used as an earth. That's bonded onto there. So should that have been connected up, this whole metal housing would have been live. Um, which is a lot of trouble waiting for somebody. So I'm going to either replace that for a bit of 4 mil. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace that for a bit of 4 mil earth so that that doesn't ever happen in future. So I'm just experimenting with stuff, basically, to see what I can make come on. So it's very temporary, but I think I've sussed it out now. I've sussed out the problem in the bathroom. I've sussed out the problem with all the switching. Um, I'm just having to swap things around. <laughs> It'd be so much easier, basically, if I had another Sparky with me, because you could bell things out quicker. Um, I, I think I need to invest in like a tone generator or something, because I'm constantly back and forth, back and forth. Um, what I'm basically doing is just switch, playing around with the switch lines and the feeds to the lights and seeing which switch does what after doing that. Um, and I'm slowly getting to the bottom of it. But I think I'm there now. I've kind of unborrowed all of the neutrals, found the sources for everything, run in fresh what needs to be run in. I've run in the new circuits for the garage, doors, for the lighting, for all the sockets. There was a fault on the sockets, um, which took me absolutely ages to find. And all it was was an extension lead plugged in um, with a dodgy heater on it. So I've unplugged that and they've just reset. But the socket was like hidden right away behind this big cupboard. So yeah, we're getting there. It's just, it's just a faff basically. But yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. We've pulled the new feed into here. I've pulled a new fan feed across. Um, I wasn't happy leaving the connector blocks above the ceiling and it felt a bit stupid putting a Wago box above there as well. So I'm just, just in the process of basically tidying it up slightly and leaving it all inside the light fitting so that if I want to access it, like when I'm ready, they're getting a new fan. So when they get the new fan, I've got this running out to hit the other side of this wall. So I put a fan isolator and out of the fan isolator into the fan, um, but at least it's up here ready. It's been an absolute mission, as you can tell. We've got everything working now. All the lights out there are all working, but it's literally been process of elimination going through every single one. Okay guys, that is it for today. Well, for you guys it's it, just because I'm gonna send our poor cameraman home because he's got lots and lots of editing and stuff to catch up on. I'm just gonna finish the last few bits here on my own. It's been a bit of a beast of a day. We've had to rewire loads of stuff. I thought by the time I'm finished faffing around, making it all right, I could have rewired it three times. So I've just run in a few new circuits. Everything that I've done new, I've taken off of the wall. So you'll recall before there was a whole heap of cables and stuff going along here. The only cable that's going along that now is that supply one and that one. So you've got them all running through the joists. I've rerun the cables to here. This is what I'm gonna do later after Mr. Cameraman leaves. Just those last couple of little bits and pieces. We've rewired the lighting circuit in here. So now the two-way lighting actually works. Um, reconnected all the sockets, reconnected all of the lights next door, pulled in the fan supplies, 
um, rewired the supply to the lights next door because it was knackered. We've done loads. It's one where it probably might not sound that bad, but just getting it actually in and wrapped up and figuring out what was going where was just a mission. We like jobs like that, don't we? We like them, don't we, Nathan? Yeah, because uh, they make you better. And then when you go back to another nice, easy, piddly job, they feel like a piece of cake, um, which we have also had lots of today. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I hope you've learned something from it. We've, uh, we've also tested the safe working load for the shelf, so we can confirm that that is solid now after thorough testing. Um, and yeah, the consumer unit is all finished, used all the number tags and things, kind of managed to work our way through it. And we've got the supply out to the AFDDs down in the shed as well, which I've got to go do some more testing and bits on before I leave. So thank you guys again for watching um, and I'll see you on the next one.